Hello, my name is Dr. Neil Tonk. I'm an assistant professor of radiation oncology at the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. What we'll be doing today is transperineal placement of prostate fiducial markers, as well as implantation of a rectal space OER hydrogel for intact prostate radiotherapy. We will walk you through the procedure from start to finish. Behind me on my tray are two chlorhexidine swabs to clean the skin, 20 cc syringe of buffered lidocaine, a 23 gauge needle with guard, a 22 gauge by six inch spinal needle, jelly and gauze. First, we'll use the chlorhexidine swabs on the skin immediately anterior to the anus. The patient has already started pre-procedure antibiotics the day before, and he has completed a self-administered enema the morning of the procedure. I'll take the 23 gauge needle with the guard and attach that to the buffered lidocaine syringe. First, I'll create a skin wheel approximately one and a half centimeters above the anus at the midline. Then I will inject around this initial injection in a slight star-shaped pattern to create the skin wheel. Then, as I aspirate, I'll inject deeper up until the length of the needle into the perineum. I'll use an estimated six to eight cc's. I prefer to do the skin wheel first so that the ultrasound probe is not the, the first thing that the patients feel. Then I'll take jelly and apply that to the front of the ultrasound probe. We use a sterilized uh, BK probe that's covered in a clean condom cover filled with jelly already. The ultrasound probe is sterile and we have already wiped down the stepper ultrasound in all surfaces. We insert the probe into the anus with a slight downward angle and we'll be frequently adjusting to make sure that we have the prostate in the correct position. Before we insert the probe, the stepper is set so that the probe is halfway up the stepping cradle at the 50 centimeter position. I'm now adjusting the prostate probe so that the gland is midline on my screen and the gland is midline in the axial position. Once I lock the cradle in the axial position, I switch to the sagittal plane and identify the whole gland. In addition, I scroll left and right to visualize the entire prostate. I ensure that I can see the entire gland and that there are no air bubbles in the rectum. I'll lock again with my urethra in the midline and centered. At this time, you can identify your planes for fiducial marker and hydrogel placement. I'll take the long spinal needle, which is a 22 gauge six inch needle to my remaining buffered lidocaine to perform a prostate apex block. The needle is primed to remove air. I'll step out of the patient to identify the needle track. The most important skill in transperineal approaches is knowing exactly where your needle is at all times. It is easiest by following the exact line formed by the buttons on the ultrasound along the probe length and then following that into the patient. Once the needle is in the patient, I assess the position of the needle frequently and follow it along the ultrasound path into the patient. I'll advance the needle and anesthetize along the needle track, aspirating every single time before I inject to ensure that I'm not in a blood vessel. I'll step in as needed to reach the prostate apex. I'm now at the prostate apex. I inject anesthetic here, always taking care to know exactly the position of the needle tip and length. I then roll the ultrasound to the patient's right and inject more anesthetic. And then I'll roll it again to the patient's left to inject more anesthetic. This allows for a full prostate apex block, which can be performed in the office. At this time, I've injected approximately an additional 10 cc's 
of buffered lidocaine, yielding a total injected amount of about 16 cc's. I'll keep the remaining lidocaine for a later hydrogel injection. Our standard positioning for prostate markers for IMRT, SBRT, or intact pr prostate proton radiotherapy is at the left mid gland, right apex, and right base, or vice versa. First, I'll rock the ultrasound to the patient's right to be right of the midline, and again, we'll follow the line of my ultrasound into the prostate gland. It's important to follow the pathway of the ultrasound probe into the patient. I recommend inserting parallel to the probe length following an imaginary line from the buttons down the probe along the length of the ultrasound probe and into the patient. You can see my visualized needle entering the prostate gland. And I step in a little bit more. At this time, a gas bubble has come into the patient's rectum. Many gas bubbles will pass around the probe. However, for large bubbles, it may be necessary to remove the probe entirely, which may allow you and the patient to expel the gas. Do not place a marker if you cannot see your needle tip. For this patient, we waited until the gas bubble moved past and we injected the first marker into the patient. Now I'm inserting the second prostate marker. What I'll do is I'll rotate the prostate ultrasound probe just past the midline again on the sagittal view and insert the second needle. We'll create an imaginary path length along the left prostate gland. I'll adjust the probe to make sure that I can find my expected needle track. Then we insert straight to the prostate base. The marker is deployed, the needle is removed. Using the exact same prostate ultrasound position, I'll enter the patient's skin in the perineum and insert the marker along the exact same plane, but instead, this time just at the prostate apex. Here, the needle has just advanced into the prostate at the apex. We've deployed the last marker and the needle is removed. Our markers are done. If you're only doing fiducial markers, then the probe can be removed and the procedure is finished. If you're placing a rectal hydrogel spacer, then we will continue on. Currently, I'm adjusting the ultrasound to let some gas escape from the patient's rectum, and then I replace the ultrasound in the ideal position. Adjusting the probe the ultrasound, we're identifying the perfect landing zone. We set the ultrasound to be in the midline urethra on the sagittal view and identify the rectal wall as well as the perirectal fat. The perirectal fat will be bright on the ultrasound. We'll switch over to the axial view and then confirm this on the axial positioning. At this time, now that the prostate is in the ideal position on the ultrasound, we've identified our landing stone, we'll start assembling the space OAR hydrogel kit. This view might be a little bit difficult for you to see, but there are several other videos available online, including Dr. Fagundes and Dr. Montoya's with close-up views of kit assembly. First, we attach the diluent syringe to the powder vial. We push down on the syringe barrel, not the plunger, until the cap of the vial is depressed and the red line disappears. Then the entire contents are injected fully by depressing the plunger and the vial shaken for about 10 total seconds. We put the vial down in the tray so that it does not roll off your table. Then take the accelerator syringe, break the heat seal by retracting the plunger, and advance the plunger 
until all but approximately five cc's of fluid are expelled. Then draw back one cc of air. Then take this accelerator syringe and attach it to the Y connector. And then you'll place this down on the tray so that its hip faces up and no accelerator enters the Y connector. Take the vial and withdraw five cc's of the mixture into the syringe and you can discard the remaining. Once the vial is removed, add an additional one cc's of air into the syringe. Take the Y connector with the tip pointing upwards. Attach the syringe to the Y connector. Then attach the syringe barrel connector. And then attach the syringe plunger connector. You now have a completed space OER system. Do not prime the system by advancing the plungers forward. Make sure the one cc of air is in each syringe. Then I place the assembled system down with the tip pointed up. Remove the hydrodissection needle from the tray and attach a 10 cc, 10 cc saline flush. Expel any air to prime the needle. Turning back to the patient, remember what position your bevel is in. Insert the needle always with the bevel down and you will have the bevel down for the rest of the procedure. Here is the landing pathway for the hydrodissection. You aim to enter anterior to the rectal hump and then angle your needle posteriorly to enter the retroprostatic fat. Again, always remember to have your bevel pointing down for the remainder of the procedure. We advance the needle along the ultrasound length quickly to the prostate apex. Here we are at the prostate apex just above the rectal hump. You may feel a slight pop when you traverse the rectourethralis muscle. Now we advance the needle to the mid gland of the prostate. When you enter Denonvier's fascia, clearly you may find the needle advances easily to the mid gland and then over to the base of the prostate. We'll switch the axial view to confirm positioning of the needle in Denonvier's fascia and then step out of the patient. We see the needle tip is posterior to the prostate and anterior to the rectal wall. This is a suitable position. Switching back to the sagittal view and stepping back into the patient, we'll find our needle position again with the bevel tip down. Then we'll give our first puff of saline. If in the right position, we'll see a large pocket open up nicely as we do here. You'll see the saline dissipate as well. If the saline does not dissipate, you may be in the rectal wall or the posterior prostate and you should reposition your needle. We retract the needle some more to hydrodissect to the mid prostate and towards the apex. We'll switch to the axial once more to check that we are dissecting correctly. We'll give another puff of saline and we we'll see that the saline disperses cleanly on both sides of the prostate gland. At this time, I like to take the remaining lidocaine and inject two cc's into the hydrodissection pocket, which anecdotally removes any pressure sensation the patient may feel during the actual space OER hydrogel injection. Back in the sagittal plane, finally we'll return to the needle position by stepping back in. We'll prime the Y connector by pushing the fluid to the top of the barrels in each syringe. Take care to keep this pointed up the entire time. Now we'll connect the primed Y connector to the hydrodissection needle. Then we'll inject the hydrogel, the entire contents, over about 10 seconds. And I tend to count out loud so that the team and the patient hear. You can see the pocket open up well. We're done injecting at this point. The needle can be removed. Then we check in the sagittal and axial planes to confirm appropriate and correct placement. Here in the axial view, there's excellent placement and separation. The procedure is finished and the probe is removed. The patient is cleaned up and then the patient is discharged when he urinates. Thank you.